So I've been using the Elgu Saturn II for about six months now, and although I think it's a fantastic machine, it definitely has its flaws. So this is my longer term review, and just to let you know my thoughts on it, who this may be for, why you might want to consider it, and just maybe an alternative to consider instead. So like I said, I've been using the Elgu Saturn II now for about six months, and I primarily use it to print off a whole load of tabletop miniatures. We'll kick it off with the quality first, and I've got to say this machine is pretty damned fantastic. I moved across from the Elgu Mars III, which was a nice machine, but it did seem to be quite lacking in certain areas. The Elgu Saturn II basically solves the vast majority of the complaints that I had with the Elgu Mars III. It feels solid, it feels well made, everything about it feels premium. It includes a lovely big build plate which I can fit pretty much everything I need to on. And when it comes to printing off things like regiments or a whole host of different units or different sets to basically get my monthly content done, it's a real breeze to do. I would mentioned in my initial review that the screen seemed quite unresponsive and someone pointed out that I just hadn't removed the film from the front and that's true I hadn't removed it and it works fine once I did. So aside from the relatively large build plate that you get with this machine you'll also get an 8k screen as well so you get fantastic details on your miniatures and you'll get a fan built into it internally. Now it connects via a little USB that's inside of it don't plug anything else in there it is literally just for the fan so don't go like destroying the machine by accident. Now, when it comes to the overall running of the machine, everything just works fine. It's easy to set up, it's easy to get leveled. It has that ball joint leveling system on it, which if you've used previous Elgo machines, you're gonna be very used to. I hadn't used anything different before, so I had no frame of reference, but I actually do prefer this stuff on Frozen. Just the way it levels out, it just seems a little bit easier. But the ball joint is fine. Once you go through the initial leveling process, you don't really need to re-level. At least I've not had any experience of needing to. It stayed level for the entire time I've been using it over that past six months, and I do a, a lot of printing. In terms of replenishable, so things like the FEP, I've only had to replace it the one time so far, which has been really good, so about once every three months. And I've got to say, I'm printing off almost every single day with the machine. The screen is still going strong as well, so I've had no issues with the screen. When I've done the exposure testing, all of that, it's still working just as good as the day I got it. So, so far, I've been really lucky with this machine, and I've not had any faults come up or anything like that. So, quality-wise, all in all, it gets a thumbs up from me. Now, what about the quality of the printed miniatures? Well, they look absolutely fantastic. They're definitely on par with the Elgu Mars 3, if not better. The quality of the miniatures I've been printing off is pretty damned fantastic, and I've been really happy right from like your 15 millimeter models that I've been doing a whole load of, through to the larger models as well. I always get crisp, clean details, and things just look fantastic. Whether or not you're printing off like those really tiny miniatures at the 15 millimeter scale or 32 millimeter scale, through to things like statues or busts, or if you're trying to do some terrain as well, it's a really good all around printer that pretty much can accomplish all of that in one go. So obviously it's a great build quality and it gives you some fantastic looking resin prints. All in all, that sounds pretty fantastic, but there are some things that you do need to consider if you're gonna be picking up this machine. The first one is it's really, really loud. And I don't mean the fan, the fan and everything else is just kind of part and parcel with 3D printers, at least in my experience anyway. The thing that's loud and obnoxiously loud is when it's going up and down. So as it lifts and lowers that print bed, it does this weird, annoying squeal. And I'll try to get it on camera and audio as well, just so you can hear it for yourself. Now this might just be my model, but I, I don't know, it really drives me mad sometimes. It's not the be all and end all, because ultimately you shouldn't be around the machines when they're working, but if I have this running, I can hear it from upstairs. So this is downstairs at the moment and I can hear it from the other side of the house. It's loud and it's quite a piercing sound. It's, so just something to consider. If you've not got much space and you end up with a unit like mine, it can be a bit annoying. And the other thing to consider as well, it's not quite as plug and play as other printers I've used. So historically I've used the Mars 3, I've used the Mars Pro as well. I've also used Frozen's Sonic 8K Mini and they've all been very much, you just grab the settings that it recommends and you are ready to go. Not so much with the Saturn II, and that's not necessarily down to the fact that it's a Saturn II and it has issues, it's just down to physics and the size of the thing. Basically what I was experiencing was more models falling off their support during a print. And what this comes down to is ultimately the suction. There's so much more, obviously resin in the vat, you've got a much larger FEP area as well. So when that build plate is going up and down, it's experiencing more suction. In all the slices I've used, they recommend a standard 2.5 second exposure time. And in my experience, that's been too low. Now, again, this will depend on your environment, the temperature, and just other factors as well that can play into it, the type of resin, for example. 
but I've bumped mine up to 3.5 seconds and it normally works pretty much perfectly with all the prints I'm doing. However, the only way that I can get consistently good results is by controlling my temperature. And this could work out, I guess, a little bit more tricky for a lot of people out there, depending where you're based. I'm in the UK, so we don't normally get heat apart from like for one week in the year. So I do recommend if you're somewhere that is colder, getting something like a little mini heater. I picked up this little fan heater by Keplin. It's a 500 watt heater, so it doesn't use up too much power. And basically it keeps my room at a very nice steady 22 degrees. In turn, this means that the resin is far more fluid. It's not as stodgy and thick as it is when it starts to get cold. And it means that I don't really get failed prints but it is something you'll need to consider. You will most likely need some kind of heat source and whether or not it's a vat heater, something that heats directly inside of the printer or just something like I'm using to heat my room. It's just another consideration to have. Another alternative I tested out during the winter was a plant grow tent, basically sticking all my printers in there with the heater and that helped me to control a really small space in a very cold area in my garage. So that's another thing to consider. Now, prices of this machine will vary as well, so that's another consideration to have. And I've got to say, there's a few decisions you need to make if you're gonna to wanna to pick one of these up. I personally love it. It is my go-to machine. It's the thing that I use the most because it's the most versatile machine I have in my house. It's big enough to print me off some really large prints. It means that I can print off pretty much a full release of minis that I'm gonna be priming, painting, and just getting on the camera all in one go without having to do multiple trips and multiple print jobs. All in all, it does what I need it to, but it might not necessarily be for you. If you're new to 3D printing, and I believe I said this in my initial video about the Elgoo Saturn II, is that maybe something like a Mars 3 would be better placed for you. It's still got a big build plate. It's still got fantastic quality as well. It's very easy to use and you don't necessarily need to worry too much. Or at least in my experience, you didn't need to. You don't need to worry as much about heat and controlling the climate and the temperature. The Elgoo Saturn 2 is the perfect thing for somebody who is maybe in a situation like me. You're printing off a lot of miniatures. Maybe you are printing them off to sell them. If you print them off to maybe put them onto content or you just want to print off a large amount of units and paint them up and everything else. It's a great next step printer when you're already experienced with how other printers work, with some of the little niggly things that you need to get used to, like heating and everything else. And you've got some go-to resins that you can dial in the settings for. One last thing I wanna mention, because I did bring it up in my last review, was the consumables for it. Getting a FEP in the UK at the point that I purchased this was next to impossible. However, that seems to be solved now. You can literally buy them from the Elgoo website and it arrived next day when I bought one. So I hope that's helped you if you have been considering this. It's not a full length review it's just to update you on my previous review which you can find linked down in the description below all in all i love the machine it's fantastic it's a great next step printer for anybody who's been using something previous beforehand or if you have a purpose for it like you're printing miniatures to sell them or if you're printing them to produce a lot of content you just need a lot of miniatures in one go it's been a nice reliable machine it's kept on going and it's given me some amazing prints so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one bye